everyone, what topic is this from generally? What topic is this from generally? Who knows? Starts with the letter P. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I'll wait. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be polynomials. That's right. Thank you, Denzel, Danielle, and Catherine. That is going to be polynomials. So specifically what we're doing here is factoring polynomials. So again, this is going to be polynomials. And specifically, this one has to do with factoring. So let me take that and actually move it out of the way a little bit. But we are going to be factoring polynomials here. <laughs> no, worries, no worries, Damien. So here's how this works. Here's how the essential idea works. First off, I'm going to tell you what unit this is from. This is going to be unit seven in math knowledge right here. Mat MK unit seven. MK unit seven. Factoring polynomials is its own unit entirely to make sure that you know how to do this from start to finish. So here's how this works. Basically, if you're trying to factor a polynomial, a trinomial, three terms here, here's what you do. First, we need to see that this is in the form a, let me use a different color here. Uh, yeah, actually, ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, I'm going to use different colors here. I'm specifically going to mark the B and the C. Everyone, do you see the pattern that I'm showing here? AX squared, X squared, plus BX, 11X, plus C, 18. Is it clear to you that B is 11 and C is 18? Is that clear to you in terms of what I'm showing here? Cool. Cool. So... Now that we've identified the way it's set up, quote unquote, all we need to do is know this process. The process to find the factors. To find the factors. Step one, find the factors of C. The factors of C that add up to B. That's basically it. Find the factors of C, the 18, that add up to B, which is 11. That's straight up how this works when it comes to factoring trinomials. That's the rule, that's the main idea of that process. So let me just show you right here, 18. Everybody, let's list out all of the factor pairs of 18. What, what two numbers can you multiply together to get 18? Help me out. We see 3 and 6, 9 and 2. We're missing one more. Missing one more. It's the one that's obvious that everyone always uh, overlooks. Yeah, that's going to be 1 times 18. So the first set again, 1 times 18. That's a factor pair of 18. 2 times 9, that's another factor pair and three times six. So those are the factors of 18. Now, the second question is, once you have those factors listed right here, it's, hey guys, uh, which pair adds up to the B? Which pair of these adds up to the 11? The second one, the two times the nine, that will add up to 11. So again, C18 equals 2 times 9. And also, so we just actually write it like this, 2 times 9. And the 11 equals 2 plus 9. So again, what factors can you multiply to get the C and add to get the B? It's 2 and 9. Those are the numbers that work. Once you have the numbers that work, this is how beautiful it is. This is how beautiful it turns out to be. You just have X and X. And so the factors that you have are right here. Let me go ahead and use purple, two times nine. So what you'll do, since you have a positive two and a positive nine, that'll be plus two, plus nine, and you're done. And that's it. 
Does that make uh, any sort of sense to anybody who's struggled with this before? Find the factors of C, find the factors of 18 that add up to B, that add up to that 11 in the middle. That's all you need. Find that pattern, boom, you're done. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Cool. So I'm, I'm glad you guys feel that way. So let me just read this for the recording. So makes sense now. I struggle with these all the time. Um, I used to see it complicated. Oh, word. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. Amazing. 100% makes sense. SMH, I'm learning about this in class. I forgot. No worries, Kevin. But, uh, and then, ooh, from a couple of students there. So here's the thing. This is one of the more fundamental problems that you'll see for factoring polynomials. You guys remember when we did solving equations and it was just uh, 3x minus 12 equals 42? You know, those problems are generally solvable pretty quickly, just like this one, allegedly, when it comes to polynomials. It can get more complicated. And there is one, single-handedly, the culprit for everybody's headaches when it comes to doing this is one thing. And that one thing is negative numbers. That's the one thing, the one thing that trips everyone up when it comes to factoring polynomials. Here's the example that I'll give you. Because if you're thinking about, let's go ahead and say a different example. I'll do it right over here. Suppose we have x squared, and let's say it's plus 7x, and then let's say it's minus 18. Let's say that's what we're trying to factor. Well, now you have a negative 18. Everybody, you still have to think about the factors that go to negative 18. And everyone, what's the only, what's the only combination of numbers that can get you to a negative number when you multiply? Is it positive times positive, negative times negative, positive and negative mixed? Which one is it? That's the only one that's going to give you a negative result. Right, it's mixed, it's negative times positive. So this is where it gets a little more complicated, but like I've told you a million bajillion gazillion times, if you go through the math basics first, before trying to tackle stuff like this, your life is gonna be so much easier. Because if I tell you, hey, find the factors of negative 18, that's gonna make no difference to you, you're fine, because you'll be able to say, okay, bet, I can have I can have one times 18, one of them is negative, two times nine, again, one of them has to be negative, or three times six, one of them has to be negative. And because one of them has to be negative, when you're trying to find out how it adds to seven, well, when you look at it, if I put a negative here, no, that's, neg that's positive 17. 18 minus one is 17, not gonna work. Negative there, nine minus two, that's seven that'll work and now we're in action and you'll be able to do that work again that easy it'll be x minus 2 with x plus 9 and it won't make a difference to you so again this is why i'm always urging you before you go into these specialized courses start with the math basics because it'll turn a headache that could last for an hour or a whole study session, it can reduce it to just a quick moment of refreshing and you're good. Does that make sense, my part of people? In the math knowledge course, um, you actually have speed drills available to you. So just to make sure you know exactly what I'm talking about, everyone just go ahead and look behind me, abracadabra. And if you go down to factoring polynomials, you can actually test yourself here with factoring polynomials, speed drills, nice and easy. So you have right over here, you can go ahead and factor trinomials with the leading coefficient being easy enough, right there, casual speed drill. And you can do problems exactly like we just did. Once it starts, there it is. And you can do problems just like this one. Practice, practice, and practice. And every time that you reset this, you get a different set of questions. You'll be told what the correct answer is at the end, so you're all good. You have all the practice you can get on this and everything else that's more complicated as you go on, all the way through the Unit 7 checkpoint. So it's all there for you. 
It is literally all there for you. My party people, as always, thanks for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. That way you can see all the updates that we come out with so you can keep improving. So don't wait, subscribe now, and then while you wait for the next video, look here or there to see a related video that's gonna help you improve even more. Let's keep raising that score and let's get the job we want. I'll see you soon.